What's good? It's your boy, Fanon. Wow, that was a really good fight last night. I covered it on the channel. Thanks to everybody that tuned in and watched the Alexander Usyk versus Tony Bellew fight with me. Man, that was a lot of fun. I got to tell you, man, that was um, that fight was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Tony, my hat goes off to Tony Bellew. Tony Bellew showed that this guy is a champion, that he was a veteran. He didn't come to lay down. He came to fight. Uh, he came in there to win that fight. And he did an excellent job. I can't remember when the knockout came, but man, I had him winning the fight going into the round when he got stopped by Alexander Usyk. So, you know, my hat goes off. My hat goes off to Tony Bellew, man. I really he gained more respect for me in that loss against Alexander Usyk than he gained in beating uh, in beating David Hay. So the first things first, man, I want to get that dude his I want to get that dude his props for what he did. Um, Alexander Usyk, man, is nice, man. Alexander Usyk is nice. Alexander Usyk did what he was supposed to do as the undisputed, the only undisputed champion in boxing, the only fighter to defend an un, and the first fighter to defend an undisputed his undisputed title since Jermaine Taylor did it. The fight after he beat Bernard Hopkins. It's been a it's been a long time since we got to see that. And I mean, if you are if you appreciate just having one champion in boxing, then you had to appreciate that fight that happened last night. I'm telling you, it's like Terrence Crawford fought and became the undisputed champion. Alexander Usyk took it a one simple step further, but yet a step further and defended it. So we got to see all the belts on the line. Every time Alexander Usyk fights at Cruiserweight, all those belts are going to be on the line. And it was a beautiful thing to see that many people. I don't know, remember. I don't remember exactly where it was, whether it was O2 Arena or whatever. But it was really nice to see that many people get to get uh, support an undisputed champion. And I know it was a hometown thing for Tony Bellew. And Tony Bellew came, and he didn't. And he didn't. Um, he could not possibly have disappointed his home, his uh his hometown fans but you know it was just a really 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 nice thing to see man so hats off to now Alexander Usyk going into the heavy if he goes in first of all I'm hoping Alexander Usyk doesn't go to the heavyweight division really and truly I'm hoping he doesn't go to the doesn't go to the heavyweight division I'm hoping that he'll stay at cruiserweight and that he can he will defend his titles that he has at cruiserweight if he can if he can continue to make that weight and can continue to beat those dudes, man. I think he's in a position where he could really build his, he could, if the monetary thing is what's down, what he's down for that can, it probably can't happen as big as it could at heavyweight, but you know, it would just be really nice, man, as a, as a diehard boxer fan to see more of those fights, to see that happen every time, every time that Alexander Usyk fought, fought. Yet another guy, Gennady Golovkin. Gennady Golovkin was one step away from that if he would have fought Billy Joe Saunders. And he chose not to take that extra step to get that last belt so that we could see uh, Gennady Golovkin defend all of the belts against Canelo Alvarez, where we could have one unified champion. And now where are we, right? We got three champions at welterweight. I mean, at, uh, at middleweight. Uh, same thing we have going on here, going on at heavyweight. We've got one, we've got four belts and two champions at heavyweight and right when we were at the you know the just about to get a once we got to one step away from a unified heavyweight champion it you know hit the bricks let's build the fight uh all kind of stuff going on that prevented that fight to happen so you know i said it in the beginning of the, i've said it at the beginning of this year i'm gonna i've said it all the way through the, this year the one thing that i wanted to see this year, 2019, uh, 2018 was undisputed, was people fight for the undisputed championship and and have a unified champion. And though I don't think that this was the best year in boxing, we got that out of we got that out of, out of Alexander Usyk and we got that defense. But let me talk about the fight itself for actually and then because I know he's going to wind up going to heavyweight. So. All right, as far as the fight go, I don't think that Alexander Usyk was Nessus was exposed. I've heard some people say that um because Tony Bell you put up a better fight than a lot of people expected. 
Now, what I think it what I think it was is uh, Tony Bell. You was a better fighter than Alexander Usyk had been in the ring with before, or more experienced fighter than Alexander Usyk had been in the ring with before. Murad Gassiev and those Murad, Murad Gassiev and those type of dudes. I mean, they're just as far as their experience level, they are you know they're a level down from clearly a level down from Tony Bellew, who has been a world champion, who's been in the ring with um with a big puncher in Adonis Stevenson. He lost that one, but you know he's been in the ring with Adonis Stevenson. He's been in the ring with David Hay a couple of times. The cat is somebody that's he's got thirty five professional fights and. He's and he's just a very, very experienced. He had a game plan. He knew what he wanted to do. He kept his spacing very as long as he could keep his spacing up. Hey, man, he was he was good. He was good. But once he, you know, he fatigued a little bit, slowed down. Then Alexander Usyk started throwing with some more heat as the fight went on. And and there you go, man. Just he lit him up with a right hook that from the southpaw stance. Like, so I guess it was kind of like a straight, a straight left that he hooked uh le- yeah could you say that a straight left that he hooked slightly like hybrid hook like but on a temple shot uh with his right with his left hand man and just laid him out but i don't think alexander Usyk was necessarily exposed because that's what he he was in there against a guy he probably picked up some stuff one thing that i noticed that alexander Usyk started doing later on uh was he started timing He's really started doing a very good job of timing where Tony Bellew was going to move his head. So when he dipped down a couple times, when he he threw a jab just to have uh, just to have Tony Bellew dip under it to Tony Bellew's right, and right when he dipped down and came back up, boom! That right hook was right that that right hook was right there. So you know he still wound up starting him wound, wound up setting him up activity level strength was just wanted to be too much. And I think that he really was going for the knockout. So he might've been putting a little bit more on doing a little less, you know, um, touch, touch, touch than he usually does because he wanted to sit down and wanted to get that guy out of there. But at the end of the day, that's what he did. So I don't necessarily think that dude got exposed. Um, now, as far as what he'll do with the heavyweights, look, I'm going to tell you, I think this dude can be trouble in the heavyweights. I really do. I made the mistake one time in the late 1980s of thinking that a cruiserweight coming up to heavyweight was going to really just get get woken up, right? Um, and that was Evander Holyfield. Evander, the real deal Holyfield. Wind up going up to heavyweight and being everything um, everything that he was in cruiserweight. So it's there, it had, because back in the day when you had lightweights, when there was a jump between the lightweights and the up to heavyweights, that was a big gap fighting at 175 pounds, jumping up to fight guys that are 215, you know, 210, 215. That's 25, 30 pounds that guys were, you know, guys were giving away. So those jumping from lightweight to heavyweight was a lot bigger deal. Jumping from cruiserweight, a lot of these guys, these cruiserweights would have been heavyweights back in the, you know, back in the 1960s. Usyk would be fighting at heavyweight. The cruiser, the cruiserweight division was within the heavyweight division. So, so I think Usyk can give a lot of these dudes troubles, man. We saw him in the world, uh, not the World Boxing Super Series. He was in the World Boxing Super Series, but he's also in the World Series of Boxing, that hybrid amateur professional tournament where he beat Joe Joyce. So he he ha- he showed that he can handle a bigger fighter. So now we'll see what's happening. And as far as Anthony Joshua, man, if he fights Anthony Joshua, I don't see him fighting. I don't see him fighting Deontay Wilder anytime soon because of the politics that are going on in in boxing the guys that i think alexander Usyk would have the hardest time with the guys he'd have the hardest time with obviously are the biggest are the big big heavyweights in deontay wilder anthony joshua uh if depending on what tyson fury looks coming like coming out of here um the luis ortiz uh luis ortiz now luis ortiz and he would be a great fight the two southpaws one active, one a very nasty counter puncher. Um, Usyk would have, you know, obviously have an age advantage, but I, I would like to see it, man. As far as him getting in there with Anthony Joshua, we'll we'll see if that happens. Personally, I don't I don't see that happen because I think that Alexander Usyk is just dangerous enough. Where, you know, Eddie Hearn won't want to take that. What Eddie Hearn won't want to take that risk, and I don't know if the risk reward for them is there. The way that they have. We've talked about the fights that they've taken in, in the past. I think that a fight for um, 
a fight with Dillian White would probably be a more more a more prosperous fight, a financially make financially make more sense for the promoter. Also, a fight with Derek Chisora would probably make more money, um, makes more sense financially. Clearly, a fight with Tyson Fury would. Uh, Deontay Wilder probably doesn't because there's a chance of going to sleep. Uh, so, you know, we'll see if it happens, man. We'll see if it happens. But look, look, getting out of this video, hats off to Matchroom Boxing for providing a very, very good fight. And I watched pretty much the whole fight card. I enjoyed watching Ricky uh, Ricky Burns. Ricky Burns was in there against, you know, a, like a domestic level punching bag. A British domestic level punching bag and knocked him out. <laughs> that was fun to watch. Um, Anthony Carolla's fight was good. Was uh was entertaining. Uh God man, I can't remember what it was that came on right before. I didn't get to see Josh Kelly uh because I was at my son's basketball practice, so I didn't get a chance to get there for that. But all in all, man, of the fights that I saw, I had a good time, man. I really did enjoy myself and I hope uh I hope they do it again. That was a that was a the mat the main event for real. And actually, man, I gotta tell you too, that I think the last uh UK card uh that Matchroom put on with Dillian White and Joseph Parker, Chisora, and Takam was a good night of fights. Now, I don't know whether or not that's, you know, I'm still not saying that that's the upper, upper level of skill boxers, right? That that I'm not, I'm not confusing that stuff with like a Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence fight, right? Or a Mikey Garcia, Errol Spence, or a Mikey Garcia, Vasily Lomachenko type of fight. But I will, those two, but that fight between Tony Bellew and Alexander Usyk, man, that was a high level boxing. That was a high level boxing uh, match and I really really enjoyed it so hat, hat hats off and hey, if you're not subscribed please subscribe and I'm out peace <laughs>